Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stefan and in this video I want to show you how to play a dozen a day primary book one group three exercises. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and if you like what you see give this video a thumbs up. I also offer online piano lessons if you're looking for one. Information is going to be in the description below. So I've done already group one and group two, if you want to see those, again, links are below. And in this video, I want to show you the 12 exercises found in group three. A dozen a day is one of my favorite technique books for very young beginners and early beginners, whether adult or, or kids, because the exercises are quite short, but they present a lot of different challenges and you don't have to spend months and months learning uh, studies to work through those difficulties. So let's start with number one, which is deep breathing. I'm going to demonstrate it first and then I'll talk you through it. So every time the book mentions deep breathing, it's usually about chords. And the reason why it says deep breathing is because the whole body has to work when you're playing bigger chords, not just the fingers, but you have to channel the energy from your arms, your forearms and your wrists. So try to think of it as, the, as, as a very heavy motion when you go down with those chords and all notes obviously going down perfectly at the same time, a relaxed, soft wrist and curved fingers. So right hand start in the C major position, C, E, G, one, three, five, chord one, left hand the same. We're going to one, two, and then four and five on the F, G, three, four, left hand copies, one, two, three, four, then they repeat together, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we've got half notes, minims, and semi-briefs at the end. Very simple exercise, just really concentrate on the notes going down together, as opposed to things like that, and keeping the hand nice and curved, and try to make the chords very heavy, and you can even take a breath before you play it. Number two, rolling. Rolling is, as you can see on the sheet music, it's stepwise motion going up and down, left hand going down and up, so kind of rolling from one side to the other. This is how it goes. So there's one thing that makes it slightly more challenging than it would normally be, and that's the thumb crossing on the F. So this exercise is trying to prepare you for playing scales later on. So we start one on the C, we've got three beats in a bar, one, two, three, and instead of putting number four and coming back, we're going to do a crossing. One, two, three, cross number one under to the F, and back number three onto the E. Left hand takes over, one, two, three, cross under number one, and over number three. Right hand takes over, cross under, cross back. One, two, three, one, two, three. So the challenge is really to keep it flowing, to make sure you don't stop at the thumb crossings and you don't stop when the melody is given from the right hand to the left hand keeping complete fluidity and really practicing that crossing so it's smooth and seamless. You don't do anything like this. But. So keeping it very nice and fluid. Number three is cartwheels, which again we had before in, in group one and group two, it's cartwheels is always about crossing the hands, which is a very important skill when it comes to piano because we don't always play low notes with the left hand and high notes with the right hand, sometimes we can cross. So this is how it goes. The melody is in triplets, so we've got three triplet quavers, which is worth one beat, a crotchet. So one, 
two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So make sure you hold those minims and you play the three quavers or eighth notes in one beat. Both hands start in the C position, C major, C, E, G, C, E, G, one, three, five. Left hand starts, five, three, one. Right hand carries on. And as soon as the right hand plays the C, the left hand is beautifully crossing over to the high C. So once again, slow motion. And back. So the key thing when we do hand crossing is again to make it seamless. And I'm going to use this word very often in these videos because if it sounds like this, that's not seamless and it feels very choppy. And it's, a, it's not a nice motion to look at. So you want the hands always to look wavy and continuous. You never want to see very abrupt motions. So starting, as soon as the left hand plays the G, right hand carries on without lifting up the G and then lift up, right, left hand arches over, and C. And that's the difficulty of the exercise, to get this slow motion across seamlessly without any breaks, without any change in the speed. Number four is skipping. And as the name says, we're going to skip, so that usually involves staccatos. Let me demonstrate it first. So again, we stayed in the C major chord, C, E, G, C, E, G in both hands, exactly the same as in cartwheels, but we had something very interesting, which is not a simple staccato, it's called a drop slur. So as you can see, the first note in the right hand is a C, the second one is an E. They are connected by a slur, which means you have to play them smoothly. But the second note has a dot underneath, which means it's staccato. So, how can you play staccato and legato at the same time? You drop your hand on the C, connect, and bounce. So the C is connected to the E, but you bounce up on the E and you drop your hand on the C. And that's why it's called a drop slur. Drop, bounce, drop, bounce, drop, bounce, drop, bounce. Left hand copy is five on the C. C, E, E, G, coming back, drop, bounce, drop, bounce. Together, bounce. And so on. So the key thing is to connect those notes and bounce up very nicely. Not just a small bounce, but a nice big bounce. And again, the bounce should be nice and rounded, not very abrupt. And this exercise, like many of the other ones, can be repeated a note higher. So you shift up your hands to the D and follow the same intervals, skips. Then you shift up again to the E, up to the F, and just use the same finger numbers, the same intervals, skips, and you can do eight sequences from C to the high C by just looking at the intervals and repeating the exercise and it's going to feel less boring because you hear different chords. Number five, jumping rope, is all about staccatos. First, slower staccatos, which are um, crotchets or quarter notes and in the second line they become quavers or eighth notes. This is how it goes. You can go as fast as you want, but when you, when you start learning any of these exercises, please go slowly because you need to get the tempo very even. The notes are fairly simple. C, E, G is the first bar. C, right hand E, G. Then two, three and two, B, F, G. Back to C, 
and you just alternate between those two all the way through. When you see the cherry looking like notes, it's always adjacent notes, F and G. When you see the notes lined up nicely, it's E and G. Now the staccatos have to obviously go down together. They have to be light and again, nice and bouncy. When we play slower staccatos, we bounce up a little bit more. When the staccatos become very fast in the second line, we have less time for motion, so we're going to stay closer to the keys. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Rest. One. And that's it. And again, you can try this from any note, but in this position, it's going to be easier to read. So keeping again, a very soft wrist, nothing is getting tense or rigid and making sure the hand is waving is not going up and down like a robot, but a continuous wavy motion. Number six, rocking. Again, lots of skips in the melody and some bigger intervals in the left hand fourths. Let's start. And that's it. So what you notice is it was mostly moving in thirds and the left hand between C and G, right hand between E and G. And when one hand is moving, the other one is holding. When the other one is moving, the other one's holding. Now, the point of this exercise is to learn rotation because when we play something like this, because it's out of fingers, we want to rotate the hand a little bit to accommodate for that distance. If you do it with a stiff, rigid hand, it's going to look like this. And everything is getting tense. And if you do something like this for a long time, it can get very painful. So what we're going to do is kind of balance between the two notes and letting the arm move slightly. It doesn't have to be a big motion, but you need to see a little bit of rotation and balancing on those two notes, just like a rocking chair, but always coming back to the center. Left hand starts on the C, holding, right hand E and G. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right hand holds, left hand, C, G. Two, three, four, back to right. Two, three, four, left. Two, three, four, right. Two, three, four, left. Two, three, four. Number seven, round and round in a swing. Again, we see triplets, but these are first crotchet quarter note triplets and then quaver triplets. Let me play it first. So very simple exercise. Again, it starts in the C position, C major, C, E, G, C, E, G. And first, we're going to go slowly winding. One, two, three, one, two, three. And resting on that C because it has a fermata. And the second line goes backwards and twice as fast because it's quavers. again, resting on the fermata. Now, when you do these motions again, make sure the hand is moving beautifully with the notes. It doesn't stay very rigid. This one again is perfect for moving to a note higher to the D, then moving up to E, and just using one, three, five in both hands and it's only skips. Number eight, jump the river. Let me demonstrate it first. There's a bit to talk about here. So as you can see, there is a dashed line going across 
from left to right and almost like an inverted U shape and that always means hand crossing. The right hand is actually only playing a chord, it's not playing anything else, the C chord, C, E, G, one, three, five, and the left hand is basically bouncing like a ping pong between the C underneath and the C above. So chord, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and one octave down, resting on the low C. Now again, the key thing here is to not do it like this. Abruptly, so you need that way like a, like a rainbow going around the right hand. That's what you need to imagine Perfectly timing So that in one beat you can get across obviously it takes practice But the more you practice that and you get the nice rainbow motion It's going to feel more natural and it's going to look nicer for your audience as well. This exercise again can be transposed, so you can shift up your hand one note to the D. You move up to the E, and so on. So as I said, many of these can uh, be shifted up eight times as a sequence. Number nine, climbing. This one is our C major scale exercise. Let me play it first. So if you know the C major scale, this one is very easy. If you don't know it, then that's what the previous exercise was for. Left hand starts on the C below middle C. One, two, three, four. And when you get to the G, you're going to cross over number three onto the A. And when you play the C, both thumbs go onto the C and the left hand is going to hold. One, two, three, four. Right hand crosses under, one on the F. When you get to the high C, left hand jumps down to the low C. Be careful with the first note in both scales. It's a minim half note, so it needs to be two beats long. Number 10, ping pong. Now, again, as the name says, it's going to be something going on between the right and left hand. And as we can see, it's again a C chord, C, E, G. Very simple, it looks quite complicated with so many notes, but it's the same thing repeating. So C major chord, left hand five, three, one, one, three, five, C, E, G, left hand starts, left hand is moving up, right hand is moving down. Again, three quaver triplets have to fit into one beat. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then right hand starts, one, two, one, one, two, three, four. The key thing again is to keep a rounded shape and to make sure the hand lifts up at the rest so it doesn't sound like this. We don't need to keep the thumb down, so it has to come up. like balancing just like think of the ping pong coming up and down. Number 11 sitting up and lying down. As we can see it's five note scales all the way through. Let's play it through first. simple exercise is all about wrist circles. So we, we start in the C position going from C all the way to G, one finger on each note and we go up five notes. T, 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 three, four. T, 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 three, four. And that's the main melody. Now you want to make sure that the hand follows in a circle as you go up and a circle as you come down. And 
and lift. Instead of very static, we don't want that. We want nice motion with those melody lines. So right hand starts, one, two, T, 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 one, two, left hand. Coming down, then together going up. Repeat, repeat, and coming down. Obviously, making sure the two hands strike the notes exactly together is key in getting a nice, accurate sound. This exercise, again, can be transposed. You can go up to D, E, F, and so on, and repeat it just by shifting up your hand one note. Final exercise number 12, fit as a fiddle and ready to play. Last exercise is always very similar in, in every group, and here we have some quaver additions, eighth note, which we didn't have in group one. So left hand has two chords, C, G, chord one, and F, G, chord five, seven, and the final chord is E, G, a skip. Right hand melody, starting on E in the C position, one finger on each note, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, now quavers, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it's really important to go fast there. T, 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 one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four. Hands together, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. And that's the end of group three. So I hope this gave you a little help with your practice when it comes to a dozen a day. Uh, some of you ask me if you need to be able to read music to play this. Yes, you do. But if you watch tutorials like this one, you might be able to get away with it because the exercises are so simple. You can memorize them after watching it two, three times. They get much harder in the later books, but in, in this first group, it's easy to memorize. As, as you could see, every single exercise in this group stayed in the C major position. So you can really ground your hand in that position get rooted in the C major position. If you master the exercises, then make sure to go up, shift, shift, shift. When you're learning them, I would suggest doing two, three a day, not spending more than five, 10 minutes on it, especially if you play other pieces and exercises. If this is all you do, then of course you can spend as much time on it as you want to. And once you learned all of them and they go really well, you can play all 12 as a warm up shouldn't take more than five minutes to play through the 12 exercises. Thank you very much for watching and as always, subscribe for more.